Hey everybody, happy Monday. Happy Monday everyone. So glad you're here. We've got a really cool video in store for you today and one I've been wanting to do for so long and that is the African cichlid comparison, peacocks versus imbuna. I remember as a kid, the, some of the first fish that I got when I was very young were some African cichlids, some imbuna cichlids back when they really got popular, at least around us in the late 70s, early 80s, somewhere in there. And I've loved those fish ever since. But I think there are some misconceptions, especially when we compare the two. And I wanted to try to clear those up today. So let's get into it. What do we got? Well, by category, let's split it up, but let's start off with a very important category, personality. I would say both of the groups are very interactive, not only with each other, but also their owners. Absolutely. So the reason why people get into cichlids, I don't care if they're African cichlids, South American, Central American, it is the personality, the fact that yes, they recognize their owners so often. Peacock cichlids, Imbuna cichlids, they go crazy when you're getting ready to feed the tank. It's like they've never been fed before and it's like that every single time you feed them. But beyond that, they also interact with one another and they form a hierarchy in the fish tank, which can be very interesting to observe. So you really can't go wrong with either one when it comes to personality. The other thing, when you consider the water parameters, both of these fish are coming from Lake Malawi. The water there has a high pH somewhere in the low to mid eights and high water hardness. If that matches your water parameters, these fish can do really well. As soon as you start getting above that pH of 7.5 into the upper sevens, for us, we are around the pH of 8 to 8.2 and our water hardness is 10 degrees GH and KH. They breed for us, they're happy, they live a long, happy life in our fish room. So it doesn't matter if it's a peacock cichlid or an imbuna, they enjoy the same water parameters. Now in regards to color, which is obviously a very important consideration when you're picking out fish, and that's probably why you're drawn to either of these groups, do both of them have amazing color? Yes, both of them do. Although the imbuna may have a little bit more of a solid, kind of stronger color, but something to keep in mind are the peacocks will take longer to color up and the peacock females will never color up. That is absolutely an important point. The peacock cichlids show a lot of amazing color and often that color, there's more than one color in the fish where the imbuna, as you'd mentioned, are a little bit more solid. One of the things I think that attracts people to cichlids from Lake Malawi is that amazing color, almost salt water like, like you mentioned. The females, however, brown, silver, depends on the species for the peacock cichlids. And so in that respect, the imbuna sometimes have a little bit more color because it doesn't matter if it's male or female. Usually they're both going to show really nice color. Now, when it comes to cost, it's going to vary depending upon the region in which you live. Usually when we're looking at these fish, fully colored male peacock cichlids are going to be the most expensive, at least in our area, in the Chicagoland area. When they're showing color, retail, it's not uncommon to see these fish going for anywhere between $30 to $60 each. Female peacock cichlids, however, are generally, at least from a retail perspective, nearly worthless unless somebody specifically wants to breed them. Imbuna cichlids overall tend to be less expensive. Often you can find them at Petco's and PetSmart's for just a couple of dollars as mixed imbuna and they're still showing that wonderful color, again, whether it's male or female. So at least in terms of cost, your imbuna cichlids are gonna be a little cheaper. Now, in regards to breeding, chances are, if you are looking at either of these fish, you may be interested in breeding, and both groups are relatively easy to breed. They're both mouth brooders. And one thing to keep in mind, though, if you're breeding peacock cichlids, those females that you may have, uh, little baby females, they, they are not gonna really, nobody's gonna really want them. Yeah, if you're breeding cichlids, most likely you're breeding them to sell them. And that is something to keep in mind. When we go to the swaths and we breed in Buna cichlids, even from a very early age, they show pretty nice color. Even if the females are gonna change color later on, they still are generally brightly colored. And so they're really pretty easy to move for those people who are interested in those fish. For the peacock cichlids, once again, if you're trying to sell them young, none of them have color, and so people don't know what they're getting, and therefore they might not pay as much. Once they reach a size where you can actually tell the difference between males and females, again, unless somebody's wanting to breed those fish, you're not gonna be able to move silver and brown fish. People just generally don't want them for their fish tank. 
Now, one of the main misconceptions, I think, when it comes to comparing peacock cichlids and Mbuna cichlids are the aggression levels. Yes, they are both African cichlids. Yes, they're going to be generally aggressive, especially if you tried to put them in a community tank that's probably not going to work. Here, what we're talking about is having an Mbuna setup versus having a peacock cichlid setup. When you do that, often the Mbuna cichlids tend to be less aggressive than a peacock cichlid tank. Ambuna cichlids are also tend to stay a little bit on the smaller side relative to peacock cichlids. Therefore, when you look at our fish room, we have a 75 gallon Ambuna cichlid tank that has been up and running for years with virtually no problems. We have a 55 gallon Ambuna tank on the other side of the fish room. Again, that's been set up for over a year, zero issues. We've taken the time for the most part to include Ambuna fish that are on the less aggressive side. Because of that, you can generally get away with a 40 gallon breeder for a small group. 75 gallon, generally speaking, is gonna work for a, an average size Mbuna cichlid tank. When you're setting up that Mbuna cichlid tank, usually it's best to overstock that tank. So the 75 gallon, we have about 25 Mbuna, full grown Mbuna in that tank. When it comes to the peacocks, these fish can sometimes grow a little bit larger. Often what people want to do when they're setting up a peacock tank is an all-male peacock cichlid tank because after all, those are the ones that are showing the color. When that happens, usually you're going to have a very strict hierarchy in that tank where you're going to have a dominant male or possibly two, and then there is going to be the rest of the community. There's a couple things that can happen there. One, if those fish are not in a large enough tank, you can see some significant aggression and often a lot of bullying. Therefore, when it comes to a male peacock cichlid tank, personally, I like to have at least a six foot tank to maximize my success. The other thing to consider is when you have less dominant peacock males in that tank, they tend to color down sometimes. And so, it's not uncommon for somebody to go to a pet store and find a three or four inch male peacock that's dominant in the tank at the pet store, fully colored up. I'm like, wow, I wanna add this to my tank at home. You bring it home, it's an established tank, immediately that male is going to color down and it might stay that way for the better majority of its life and you spent 50 or $60 on a fish that's like, wow, it was a really vibrant blue and yellow and now it's kind of a pale blue and a little bit of yellow. So. Bottom line is when it comes to setting up these tanks, when it comes to aggression, at least for a beginner, it might be easier to set up an Mbuna tank provided that the fish you pick are less aggressive. For instance, yellow labs, rusty cichlids, Pseudotrophius psilosi, Pseudotrophius aci, these are Mbuna that tend to be less aggressive and they work really well with one another. All right, for the last category, how about feeding? I know I know peacocks, you can feed a little bit more variety, right? For sure. The peacock cichlids, yes, you can feed them the normal cichlid flakes. Sometimes they will even like meatier foods. The Mbuna, you gotta be really careful. They tend to want more vegetable matter, more algae matter. So we feed a lot of kelp flakes and kelp wafers in that tank. But if you feed them a diet that's too high in protein, the Mbuna sometimes, can suffer from bloat and other issues. So it is a little bit easier to feed the peacocks, but overall, when it comes to these two fish, one, you really can't go wrong in terms of color. And if you've got the setup that is correct for those, those fish in terms of the tank size, they really are both awesome fish. I tend to lean towards recommending the Mbuna for newer fish, or at least people newer to cichlid keeping. Both of them should be kept by people who have some experience keeping fish before they dive right into the African cichlids. So, we do have some species profiles down in the description below. If you want to learn more, we've done a video on how to set up an Mbuna tank, which I will include in the description below. Appreciate you being here, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.